since my baby left me. Tom, Eugene, I wish you a warm welcome to BMW Motorrad. Welcome to Munich. We've got a few uh, exciting days ahead of us here in Munich. We're gonna see plenty of town as well as plenty of BMW in general. And what would be a better way to explore Munich on our heritage, the R18? Um, I would like to introduce you to Roland Stocker, who is the project leader and I would say the spiritual father of the bike. Warm welcome also from my side. It's a super pleasure to have you here. And this is our latest uh, baby. And this is our big R18. And I'm super happy to introduce you a little bit to the motorcycle. So it's a boxer like you see. <laughs> and it's the biggest boxer ever we ever built. It's 1800 cc. And the version what you see here is packed with a lot of accessory parts. We want to make sure that you have a plenty of parts to make the bike yours, to individualize the bike and really to find your own style. That's why we offer different handlebars and different parts and really to make it special, make it yours. So, but later on, after this, we're going for a ride and therefore you will ride the first edition. Do you have any specific question to this bike? No, I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of the boxer engine anyway, so of course for me, I'm very excited to, uh, to get to ride, like you said, the, the biggest boxer engine you've produced. So um, yeah, when do we start? Could there be a better place to, to show up with these bikes than BMW Group Classic? You might know uh, the, uh, the grandfather of these bikes is still living here, the R5. It's over there. I think you will see it in, the, in a few moments. And the other thing is that this place is a place where the very first boxer engine was born. So it's a perfect match with these bikes and you. And I think my colleagues will show you around in a, few, in a couple of minutes and you will see or hear all about the history, where this bike is coming from. Should we move in the building? Because I think your time is limited and uh, so we have something uh, to show you. So this is just a small part of our collection. 1921. Well, I think one special car we have to point out. Uh, that, this, that's the famous 507 that was built also yeah. in the 50s. Only 250? 51. 51 um, cars were, were ever built, and the most special one is to the right of you. This one. Look at the license plate. This car was owned by Elvis Presley. Oh, yeah. Well, since my baby left me. Exactly. <laughs> ah. this, is, this is right up my street then. Yeah, yeah we're cool. the one for you, Tom. Yeah, I need to be going down the strip in Vegas, you know. Obviously, clearly I've got the hair for it, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you got the voice. Oh, cheers, thank you. And they're wigs, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> that is now the original condition in Wyden. There's a, there's a story, um, because the car was delivered in white, and Elvis Presley presumably had it painted in red. Can you, can you think why? No. What were the reasons? There's a reason, yeah, because um, all the girls left lipstick marks on the car and he was annoyed by that. <laughs> I mean, we all have the same problems, you know what I mean, yeah. but <laughs> is that the reason? Well, yeah. that's the story. That's a legend, yeah. at least. <laughs> no, no, yeah. it's, it said like every morning he came out and then he got like messages written with lipstick on it and said, oh no, I don't want this anymore, I just painted that. <laughs> yeah. That car was built for hill racing, but it's um, based on the 700. So it has also a boxer engine, uh, high power output, but of course you can see it's a race car. So it's completely 
lightweight car. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't even have a, a, a speedometer, it just has the rev counter. Yeah. Uh, so we added this stuff uh, in order to get a registration for the road, to oh. drive this on classic car rallies. And it's quite fun to drive as well. That is brilliant. Am I, yeah, I'd love to. Am I okay to take a photo of this or is it not? Yes, of yeah. course. I think that, I thought, I thought, got no confidential stuff anymore. I like that. <laughs> There's a copper nut and washer just sitting loose. Yeah, it's Spares. A little boxer engine. And that's the E30. And the E30 uh, in the racing version as E30 M3 is still nowadays the most successful touring car ever. And the intake noise is the most spectacular one. Yeah, yeah. So you recognize those cars like from miles away just from the intake noise. Yeah. That's engineering, that is, yeah. <laughs> and then there's one story with this car that I have to, because this I guess one. you're the right guys to tell. And there was a race in Nuremberg where all of the three junior team members crashed, other cars themselves. So, and as, and as a special measure, the head of motorsports said, okay, next race, you will watch it from the, from the spectator view and we'll have the experienced guys racing to show you how to race probably not, not crash the cars. Huh. So this measure was not very successful because the experienced drivers crashed as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so better you just keep that car parked there then. Okay, then let's take a look at our motorcycle vault. Over here we built motorcycle engines, the boxer engines, the very first before we even did produce motorcycles ourselves. So this is one of our customers back then, Victoria. They used the, our engine, but in a different position. As it is. So BMW did not invent huh? motorcycles, but BMW invented another approach, because if you look at the geometry of the frame, this is more or less a bicycle yeah. with a engine. motorcycle engine put in. Yeah. And BMW, at, one po at, at a certain point, they thought, okay, we're building the heart of a motorcycle. Why don't we build a whole motorcycle ourselves? But with a different approach. So they had the whole engine with gearbox and drive shaft, and then they built a motorcycle around it huh. with a different geometry, <clears throat> which you could, for example, look over here. This was um, one of the very first BMW bikes, so you, you recognize that the geometry is getting more quite similar to what we know now. Yeah. And, uh, and right next to it, that's the R5 concept. So what the guys at Motorcycle Design did, they had an R5 engine and then they built a custom bike around it and showed this one at another Concours d'Elegance. And this was the path to what is now the R18. So you arrived with the R18, this is a test mule of the R18. So this is how they tested the R18 on the roads. So you might recognize some similarities, but then it's different as well. I tell you what, these are uh, definitely, definitely a big fan of the R18. It's, yeah. uh, I think, do you want me to road test this one today as well? Well, uh, well I've got yeah, it doesn't have a license plate. But well, that's a minor detail from where I'm yeah. from. Yeah, that would. <laughs> Yeah, and no, this that's, is that's beautiful, a very it? special bike. So this is the bike that won the Dakar in 85 with Gaston Rayet on it. Interesting and in what way? Because of the sponsors or...? Uh... Yeah, you can choose between Playboy <laughs> yeah, and Penthouse Playboy. over there. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So was this quite... was 84, this was 85. And uh, have you ever saw a picture of Gaston Rayet? No, well... Gaston Rayet was that size. Really? So what he did is back then, when he started his bike, so he kicked it in. Yeah went in first gear, let the clutch go, and then he jumped on the yeah, bike. This was the only like possibility to, for him to start the bike. <laughs> and you might see that over here, or on the other side, those welding stuff yeah. is not very good. Yeah. The reason is, at the Dakar Rally back then in 85, on one of the first stages, even in France, still in France, he had a big crash. Because the spectators back then in France, they switched the red lights to red, in order to be, get closer to the, to the riders. No way. And Rayet knew about this and he didn't care about the red lights, he just kept going. And, but at one red light he hit a car. Oh. So he managed to go back on the bike again and then each night the mechanics were repairing, welding this, uh, the bike because you, wouldn't, you, you weren't allowed to swap bikes during the Dakar rally, otherwise you would be disqualified. Dear me. So in this bike, in fact, was, uh, could be recognized easily in the desert because it all, all, uh, left two tracks yeah. during the whole race. <laughs> I've got my safety equipment on, so 
There we go. So ready to go, that's the road book. I tell you what, the, the uh, foot pegs are very short. Yeah, that will be for him to fit on eh? Let's finish with one very special exhibition piece. This is the very first, really, this is number one. This is engine number one. You see from the number, this is 25. 25 was not the capacity, 25 was the the code, the development code back then, but that's his number, number zero, one. zero one. So and uh, the thing years. is that this engine belongs to a collector in New Munich and he gave it to us because this year is 100 years of boxer engine. Yeah. And in fact, this was never used in a motorcycle, but this was used for decades. Hang on a minute, you for mean what? to say? It was used for decades in, at a farm as a waste pump. Well, thank you very much for visiting us here at BMW Group Classic. I hope you had fun seeing all the cars, all the motorcycles and the st history of our company. Yeah, I love history and motorsports, so for me that's the best part. Perfect. Yeah, so thank you both very much for your time. It was an excellent tour. How are we doing? Hey, no, how are you doing? Nice to see you. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Already on the beers. There yeah, we are. Two beers, great. So, how was your day today? Oh, it was, uh, today's been a fantastic day. Thank you, yeah. We've been uh, to see the BMW Classics, which was a great history lesson in itself. Great. Then, being yeah, around riding the R18 as well. well how was it uh, riding the R18? It's a little bit different bike from your normal. Uh, <laughs> I, would say, I would say quite a bit different, but for me, it's, it's uh, fantastic. It's uh, a bike which I think we've both enjoyed riding, a bike which is uh, where you can just sit back, enjoy your emotion, just enjoy pure riding. And uh, what better way to see the whole of Munich than on the R18, yeah, fantastic day. It's probably yeah. ideal to come down from a stressful race weekend. Yeah, that's it. Whenever we ride bikes, we like to ride bikes in this position, relax. Not the racing position. We like to just sit back in the R18, kick in the sides. Let's go. Can everybody be the end of the day with a nice very beer? The only way. Let's give it a go. <laughs> Best we can yes. anyway, boys. Yes. So, cheers. 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 Cheers, boys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying, lad. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a quiet taste. Yeah. <laughs>